Note to self, this video and its channel are intended for general audience. Duck, the great western engine, puffed sadly to Edward's station. It's not fair, he complained. Diesel has been telling lies about me and made Sir Topham Hatt and all the engines think I'm horrid. Edward smiled. I know you aren't, and so does Sir Topham Hatt. You wait and see. Why don't you help me with these cars? Duck felt happier with Edward set to work at once. The cars were silly, heavy and noisy. The two engines had to work hard, pushing and pulling all afternoon. At last they reached the top of the hill. Goodbye, Whistle Duck and rolled gently over the crossing to the other line. Duck loved coasting down the hill, running easily with the wind whistling past. Suddenly, it was a conductor's warning whistle. Hurrah, 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 laughed the cars. We've broken away, we've broken away. Chase him, bump him, throw him off the rails, they yelled. Hurry, Duck, hurry, said the driver. They raced through Edward Station, but the cars were catching up. As fast as we can, then they'll catch us gradually. The driver was gaining control. Another clear mile and we'll do it. Oh, glory, look at that! James was just pulling out on their line from the station ahead. Any minute there could be a crash. It's up to you now, Duck, cried the driver. Duck put every ounce of weight and steam against the cars. It's too late, Duck groaned and shut his eyes. He veered into a siding where a barber had set up shop. He was shaving a customer. The silly cars had knocked their conductor off his van and left him far behind after he had whistled a warning. But the cars didn't care. They were feeling very pleased with themselves. <laughs> Beg pardon, sir, gasped Duck. Excuse my intrusion. No, I won't, said the barber. You frighten my customers. I'll teach you. And he lathered Duck's face all over. Poor Duck. Thomas was helping to pull the cars away when Sir Topham Hatt arrived. I do not like engines popping through my walls, fumed the barber. I appreciate your feelings, said Sir Topham Hatt, but you must know that this engine and his crew have prevented a serious accident. It was a very close, um, shave. Oh, said the barber. Oh, excuse me. He filled a basin of water to wash Duck's face. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were being a brave engine. That's all right, sir. I didn't know that either. You were very brave indeed, said Sir Topham Hatt. I'm proud of you. Sir Topham Hatt watched the rescue operation. Then he had more news for Duck. And when you are properly washed and mended, you are coming home. Home, sir? Do you mean the yard? Of course. But, sir, they don't like me. They like Diesel. Not now. I never believed Diesel, so I sent him packing. 
The engines are sorry and want you back. A few days later, when he came home, there was a really rousing welcome for Duck the Great Western Engine. One day, James had to wait at the station till Edward and his train came in. This made him cross. Late again, Edward laughed and James fumed away. After James had finished his work, he went back to the yard and puffed onto the turntable. He was still feeling very bad-tempered. Edward is impossible, he grumbled to the others. He clanks about like a lot of old iron and he is so slow he makes us wait. Thomas and Percy were indignant. Old iron? Slow? Why, Edward could beat you in a race any day. Really, said James, I should like to see him do it. Next morning, James's driver was suddenly taken ill. He could hardly stand. So the fireman uncoupled James, ready for shunting. James was impatient. Suddenly, the signalman shouted. There was James puffing away down the line. All traffic halted, he announced at last. Then he told the fireman what had happened. Two boys were on James's footplate, fiddling with the controls. Phew! They tumbled off and ran when James started. The signalman answered the telephone. Yes, he's here. Right. I'll tell him. The inspector's coming at once. He wants a shunter's pole and a coil of wire rope. What for? wondered the fireman. Search me, but you'd better get them quickly. The fireman was ready when Edward arrived. The inspector saw the pole and the rope Good man, jump in. We'll catch him, we'll catch him, puffed Edward. James was laughing. What a lark, what a lark, he chuckled to himself. Suddenly he was going faster and faster. He realized that he had no driver. What shall I do? I can't stop. Help, help. We're coming, we're coming, called Edward. Edward was panting up behind with every ounce of steam he had. At last he caught up with James. Steady, Edward, called his driver. The inspector stood on Edward's front, holding a noose of rope in the crook of the shunter's pole. He was trying to slip it over James's buffer. The engine swayed and lurched. At last! Got him! He shouted. He pulled the noose tight, gently braking, Edward's driver checked the engine's speed, and James's fireman scrambled across and took control. So the old iron caught you after all, chuckled Edward. I am sorry, whispered James. Thank you for saving me. You were splendid, Edward. That's all right, replied Edward. The engines arrived at the station side by side. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. A fine piece of work, he said. James, you can rest and then take your train. 
I'm proud of you, Edward. You shall go to the works and have your worn parts mended. Oh, thank you, sir, said Edward. It'll be lovely not to clank. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.